this is the biggest scandal in the country right now and so few people are talking about it and when i say this is the biggest scandal in the country this is a matter of life and death and actually as it turns out death on a mass scale now bear with me here because it's really important i just talk through the situation so you can see the context because what we're talking about at the moment is mass death I'm going to talk about COVID, but this isn't all about COVID. It's not all about what happened in the pandemic by any means. It's about mass death taking place now, which isn't directly linked to COVID. So just bear with me. So what I'm going to rely on when I'm talking throughout this video is a term called excess deaths. Now, for most of the video, what I'm doing is talking about excess deaths above a five-year average. So that's a baseline, if you like. You take a five-year period, you average the deaths, and then the excess deaths are all those deaths which are above that baseline. So they're kind of unexpected deaths, if you like. They're deaths above the norm, the norm that you would expect in that particular period, half a decade, which is obviously quite a lengthy uh, period of time. That's an un unusual increase if that happens, which needs some form of explanation. Now, we know that the pandemic caused a massive loss of life in this country. In fact, the biggest number of excess deaths since the Blitz, when this country was pounded by Nazi bombs, and in peacetime since the Spanish flu. Now, the reason it's important to talk about excess deaths with COVID, rather, rather than just relying on the absolute numbers of people who died from COVID, is this. COVID deniers, those who uh, went to great lengths to minimise the risk that COVID presented to the population of this country and elsewhere, one of the arguments they would push forward is that most of those who died of COVID were at death's door anyway. They would have died of other reasons if they weren't infected with COVID. They'd often focus on the fact that they might have COVID on the death certificate with COVID as they died, but they had another illness, which is actually what caused them to die. Now, you could argue, of course, with any illness, like you could say there are people with cancer, terminal cancer, who don't end up dying from that but they die of something else and um, i mean look we could talk about you know as well the complexities of death if i think just on a personal level of my dad my dad um had advanced prostate cancer what finally ended up killing him because he was so weak was essentially a cold i mean there are complex reasons of course why why people die um and you could also i mean because someone could be terminally ill and be hit by a car for example, and then they die from that car accident. So the reason I just say this is because there was intentional confusion about what dying with COVID meant. And I come up with car accidents because I saw online all the time people go, well, they could have had COVID, but died in a car accident. And then that's recorded as though it's a COVID death. That's not actually what happened. But anyway, the point I'm making is we don't need to have that conversation with excess deaths. It bypasses that whole problem if you like because if people were going to die anyway then it doesn't count as an excess death you wouldn't have them being pushing up the number of average deaths above uh, or the number of deaths above that five-year average so if we look at covid for example if we it's important to look at excess deaths because in many countries there was drastic drastic underreporting of covid deaths i'm thinking of egypt i'm thinking of india so we wouldn't have, by a very long stretch, the total number of people who died of COVID officially reported. Officially, the number of people who are reported to have died of COVID is 6.7 million. Now, that's a lot of people. But if you look at, for example, the Economist detailed research, between 16 million and over 28 million have actually died because of excess deaths during the pandemic, with a central estimate of 21 million. That's over three times the official death toll. That's a death toll comparable to World War I. Of course, there was a much bigger human population then, but drastic measures have been taken, including mass vaccination, though not to the degree it needs in poorer countries. Um, but nonetheless, a huge, huge death toll. Now, if we look at this country, according to the government's figures, there were nearly 178,000 people who died uh, of COVID in the UK since the pandemic began and around 211,500 people who died with COVID-19 mentioned on the death certificate. But if we look at Britain in terms of excess deaths, 
We've had in England and Wales about 168,000 excess deaths since the pandemic began. In Scotland, getting on for 16,800 um, excess deaths. Northern Ireland, the best I could get up to was the 31st of August 2022, about 3,662 excess deaths. Around 190,000 excess deaths in the UK since the pandemic began. That's a vast number of deaths, obviously. So Patrick Valance had a good outcome at the start would be 20,000 dying. He was obviously saying that would still be terrible. But that's, in any case, nine and a half times as many people excess deaths since the pandemic began as that so-called good outcome. There is a caveat, it's a bit confusing, because if we're applying a rolling five-year average, as we get into the pandemic, that's then distorted, isn't it? Because you get um, large numbers of deaths in 2020 and 2021, and that pushes up the average excess deaths. I know this is all really macabre. Crucially, though, the whole point about excess deaths, the excess death toll, is it disproves the whole they were at death's door, they'd have died anywhere th anyway thesis. Because We've had nearly three years of excess deaths in this country since the pandemic began. If it was true that, say, a large number of people were a week or a month or a year away from dying, I don't think we should be cavalier, by the way, about people um, being, you know, having a year shorn off their lives myself, then you'd expect the number of deaths to fall compared to the five-year average. The surge in excess deaths would then be followed by a fall in the number of deaths, wouldn't it, compared to earlier years? You'd have the excess deaths, but if they were killing people slightly before they were going to die anyway then deaths would dip because, you know, if they were going to die, if they died in March and they were going to die in June, um, then you'd have a whole slew of people dying at, earlier on, but then the moment they would have died, then you'd have a dip in deaths instead. Uh, that hasn't happened, though. In fact, quite the opposite. Excess deaths are surging in this country at the moment. Now, this is where we get to this biggest scandal that everyone needs to talk about, because what's more important than life and death now, in a country in which, yes, a lot of disproportionately older and vulnerable people were taken significantly before they should have done, there is mass death taking place in this country right now. So if we look at one week uh, running up to Christmas, um, in uh, England and Wales, compared to the pre-pandemic average, and this is important because then it bypasses the whole problem of 2020 and 2021 and 2022 having a surge in deaths because of COVID, then there were nearly 3,000 more deaths than 2015 to 2019 average. That's 26% more deaths. There's an important caveat there, though, because you have to take into account that the population is now bigger than then um, and and ageing. And, and, and for those in the video, I will I'll also include in the, in the description the expert who is detailing this. Um, but you can see this on the videos on the screen, the screenshots of him describing it. Um, because, yeah, you have to take into account, though, the important caveat that there is now a bigger population than 2015 to 2019. Because obviously you've got births and um, you've got to take into account more people have aged as well. So there's something called the CMI mortality monitor that takes all those factors into account. Now, when you do that, you get an 18 percent surge in deaths. That is a huge surge in death. So that's 18% taking into account all those factors compared to 2015 to 2019. And um, even though there's been excess deaths for so long, I mean, and it's important to keep making that point because people who are vulnerable to death have died um, and we're still getting huge numbers of excess deaths. Now, it's important to say, obviously, you can't, sorry, you, it's important to say now, in the here and now, you can't attribute all that to COVID or even most of it to COVID. It's not true. Now, again, the COVID denier crew will go, well, look, this is a legacy of lockdown because people didn't get the healthcare that they needed um, because they didn't go and get the treatment that they needed. But again, this is why lockdowns were implemented and this is often completely lost. It was prevent the NHS from being so overwhelmed that it couldn't deal with other health conditions. So that if you allowed COVID just to be completely run rampant in the population without attempting to reduce the number of infections, then you'd get so many people with COVID in hospitals that the NHS's resources would have to be devoted to them and then resources wouldn't be available for anyone else. The NHS would fall over. Uh, the more people sick with COVID, the less resources there is for everyone else. So if restrictions were intended to prevent COVID spreading, that means fewer COVID patients, of course, more resources for everyone else. That's why we stay at home and protect the NHS. That was the whole point. The, the issue we've got now given excess deaths are raging, isn't because of mass death of COVID. People are dying of COVID. It's important to say that. There are obviously deaths from COVID and the flu. That's very important to say. 
This is a crisis in the National Health Service. The NHS isn't able to cope because of a lack of resources, a lack of staff, a, a massively overstretched and overstressed NHS. This metric shows just what a terrible, terrible mess the NHS is in. It is literally causing mass death in this country. Why aren't we talking more about this? This is the biggest scandal right now. Mass avoidable deaths taking place in communities across the country because of the crisis in the NHS. We have to start talking about this far more because, as I've said, what bigger scandal is there? Please like, subscribe and support us on patreon.com forward slash ownjones84.